We got people growing avocado trees all over the world. Ain't that right, Anna in Portugal? Christine in Norway? And now, people want to know how to grow the fruit. So instead of just keeping the tree as a house pet, they want to learn how to produce these babies. Ain't that right, Carlos in Houston? So today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to grow avocados so that Bronwyn in Zimbabwe can produce some of these for his friends. So that three years from now, Autumn from Tennessee can hold up a branch with some beautiful fruit like this. Jocelyn in Texas is already getting started with her Simmons and Oro Negro trees. So if you're like Sharon in Kentucky, or Adam in Arizona, or Umesh in India, or even Marius in Romania. Follow me to the Shade House and I'll teach you everything you need to know so in just a few years you'll be producing your own big batch of avocados right in your backyard. Let's get to it. If you want to grow your own avocados at home, you need to manage four things. Number one, you have to grow a seedling. Number two, you have to graft onto that seedling. Number three, you have to grow that grafted seedling to maturity in the right climate. And number four, every year you have to pollinate your tree. Now to reinforce, you start out with a seedling, then you go to a tree that's healthy, who's producing fruit that you like to taste, and you graft from that healthy tree onto your seedling. See, here's a clipping from a healthy tree grafted into a seedling. Then you plant that tree in the ground outside in the right climate, and you make sure that that tree will get pollinated every year to produce fruit. Let's start at the beginning with the seedling. You will need an avocado, a pot, I start small like a one gallon or a three gallon pot, some potting soil, potting soil, not topsoil, potting soil. It doesn't have to be anything special, whatever you could find the cheapest at like Home Depot or Lowe's or your local garden center, and it helps to have a little water on hand also. Step one, fill up your pot with soil. I fill all the way to the top. Step two, harvest your seed, which is the fun part because you get to eat an avocado. Now be careful, when you're cutting the avocado, I don't want you to cut the seed with your knife. So you want to just go in real light. You don't even want the knife to touch the seed. You know, you're making guacamole at home, you're cooking stuff, you're going to throw the seeds away, who cares? But since you're harvesting these seeds to grow, you want it to be as healthy as possible. Now, you've got a seed. You want to find the bottom. The bottom is the spot that looks a little bit like a belly button. Now, a lot of times the seed kind of comes up to a, a cone. That would be the top. But the bottom is always this, like, every seed has this little belly button. Different types of avocados have different type, have different shaped seeds. But they all have this little, little notch, this little belly button in the bottom. That's going to be the bottom of your seed. Now, you'll see lots of different techniques. People put toothpicks in these things and germinate them in water. People soak them in water. People peel the skin. I don't do any of that. I just dig a little hole in my potting soil. I'm not burying this thing. Just a little indention to put the seed in. And I had you look for that little belly button. That's the bottom of the seed. You put that facing down into the soil and then cover around the seed so that there's about a third or a quarter of the seed sticking out the top. You don't cover it. You leave it sticking out the top just like that, all right? Then you take your water, and you're going to keep this seed damp. We're not going to saturate. We're just going to keep the soil damp. And if you want to, only if you want to, this is optional, you could add a little 666 fertilizer. But when I say a little, I'm talking like one or two spoonfuls, one spoonful really just around the edge of the pot. You really don't need that much. 
and then set it in partial light. Now I'm here in a shade house, so I'll just set it on my shade house shelves. And as long as you keep it in partial light and keep the soil damp, it won't be long before you see a little sprout coming out the top. And within a couple of months, you'll have a seedling just like this guy here. Now let's talk about grafting. Why do you need to graft your tree? That's a question I get all the time. Why do I need to graft a tree? Can't I just plant a seed and get fruit? The answer is yes, you can plant a seed and get fruit. It might take 10 years, it might take 12 years, you might never get fruit at all. And odds are the fruit you get won't taste good. So if you want to grow a tree from seed and never graft it, go ahead and skip to step three. And I know there's many of you out there who do want to grow from seed because you argue with me all the time in our comments about not wanting to graft your trees. But for those of you who'd like their seedling to start producing fruit in about year three or four, and for those of you who want that fruit to be delicious, pay attention to this next section on grafting. Grafting is nothing more than a technique where we take a clipping from a healthy tree that's producing fruit that we like the taste of, and we insert that clipping into our seedling. Now this isn't an avocado tree, but it's a, it's a very nice graft that I saved for videos because it really shows the, the split that we put in our, in our seedling and the insertion of the uh, budwood from the tree we grafted from. So why don't we try and do a graft right now? Now even though you can graft year round, let me get this spider web here. Even though you can graft year round, the best time of year to graft the avocado trees down here in South Florida is like late December to early March. January and February is really prime time. The trees are flowering and they're just putting up all kinds of new sprouts and they're just really very much in a growth mode. But you can graft any time of year. And for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna show you, you know, a rough demonstration how to graft. So I'm kind of looking for here we go, here, here's what you're looking for. So see here, this, this branch right here is kind of like, well, let me flip the camera around. This is some new growth right here. You see here by my fingers, it's kind of like brown and wood colored, but as we go out, the, it kind of goes from like a brown to a green to a yellow, right? So this is some, some new growth here. So I'm gonna clip this guy off. As we walk back to the shade house, I may as well say this now. I pay a guy to do my grafting for me. Because grafting is, is difficult. There's a, there's a bit of an art to it. And people that are really experienced and know what they're doing have a much higher hit rate. So I'm not fooling myself thinking I'm teaching you guys how to graft today. I'm just giving you an idea of what grafting means. Now, in the coming months, the guy I pay to do my grafting is going to join me. and We're going to do some grafting videos. And if you're local to South Florida, we're even going to do some grafting classes here at Sleepy Lizard Avocado Farm. So keep your eyes open for that. You can come here and learn how to graft from a professional who's been doing it all his life. We got some raindrops coming down, but the show must go on. So let me explain. First of all, let me show you what we're looking for. So when I was out on the tree, out at the trees, I, I was looking for tips like this. So I, I want to see this nice yellow-green color, right? But then I also want to see just these little buds here, these little new growth that haven't pushed through yet. And that's, that makes for good bud wood or scion wood for my clipping. So let me just show you how we, we prep the, the clipping, or from now on I'll refer to it as a scion. Number one, we just take the leaves off, snap the leaves off. And then we're left with this little scion here, this little clipping. It looks a little bit like a piece of asparagus. Now in order for the graft to be successful, the diameter of your scion wood needs to match the diameter of your seedling. So this seedling here I've been using as an example, it's, it's too narrow. This scion wood is, is too fat to use with this. So let's go out to the nursery and find ourselves some seedlings so we could graft these two scions. All right, I think I got two good candidates here. Here's how you graft onto a seedling. Did I mention I'm not real good at this? But anyway, the first thing we got to do to, to prepare this seedling is we have to look at our scion, our clipping, and we got to find the spot on the seedling where the diameter matches the diameter of our clipping. Because 
the, the, the grafting takes place around the edges, around the bark in the woods, in the wood, not in the, in the core. And so you need the bark to touch on each side. So the diameter has to match. So I just hold it out like this until I find a spot where the, you know, just going by my eye, I don't use like a micrometer or nothing like that where it kind of matches. So, but it, yeah, it looks like right about there is where it matches. So I'm going to just make a clip right about here, right here. Boom. Okay. Then the next thing I want to do is pull off all these little leaves. I don't want to grow branches underneath my graft. And then I have another little seedling sprout happening here. I also cut that. So now we've, we've prepped our seedling. Step two is to prep the scion. And this tool also has a very, very sharp grafting knife. And you want your grafting knife to be sharp, but you also want it to be clean. You don't want to like butter your toast with it and then go out and start working in your garden. And the way we prepare this scion is we're gonna we're gonna cut a wedge. We're gonna we're gonna whittle it down on two sides to form a wedge, and then that wedge is what we will insert into our seedling. So to prepare the wedge, we come up about an inch, and you start just under the skin, just under the bark of the tree, and you cut what at first is shallow, and you go gradually deeper and deeper until you get toward the bottom where you make your final cut. There's one side. And we start on the other side. Same thing. Right at the same spot you want to start shallow and kind of make a little wedge as you go down. Down, down, down. So you get to the bottom then. And there's my second cut. And now I've got a wedge. But more importantly in the wedge I've got exposure to the bark on each side of the wedge. So now I come over to my seedling. Okay, right in the dead center of the seedling, you want to cut down the same amount of distance, the same length that you made your wedge. So in this case, about an inch. And then I take my scion and insert it, insert it into my root stock. And you see, I put my hand, my fingers around the outside because I want the the sides to line up. I don't want it sticking out on either side. And if it's if it if it turns out the diameters don't match, you at least want to make one side line up. But actually, that looks pretty darn good for both sides there. Yeah. Okay. So now that I've got the green bark of the scion touching the green bark of the seedling, I'm ready to wrap this guy up. And here we have a freshly grafted haul avocado tree. And so that's step one and two. You plant and grow a seedling in step one. You graft onto that seedling in step two. I also grafted the little tree, but it started to rain and I wasn't sure if you could hear me, so I, I went step by step grafting the bigger seedling also. So in steps one and two, that's really what you can control. Steps three and four are much more up to the environment. So let's talk about the third thing you need to consider if you want to grow your own avocados in your backyard, and that's climate. Avocado trees like to grow in warm climates. Specifically, they don't do well in places where the temperatures get below freezing. Now, even down here in South Florida, we could get a frost or we could get a freeze. And in other places where avocados grow, they do get frosts and freezes. Avocados can survive below freezing temperatures for short periods of time. But if you live in Wisconsin and plant an avocado tree in your yard, it's not going to make it to spring. The U.S. Department of Agriculture divides the country up into agricultural hardiness zones. And in the United States of America, avocados grow in hardiness zones 8B through 11, or the yellow, orange, and red spots on this map. So if you live in any of these highlighted areas in the United States of America, you're likely to be able to grow avocados. Not pictured on this map is Hawaii, where of course avocados grow. Also not pictured on this map is Alaska, where avocados do not grow. For those of you who don't live in the United States, if you want to see if your climate is suitable for growing avocados, Google USDA hardiness zones and look at zones 8B through 11. 
If the climate where you live is comparable to one of those climates, you'll be able to grow avocados where you live. Now, if after looking at that map or Googling hardiness zones, you've determined that you do not live in a place whose climate supports the growth of avocado trees, you might be relegated to just keeping these things as a house plant. That said, I've been to arboretums and greenhouses in New York City, Washington DC, and Philadelphia where I've seen citrus fruiting inside, indoors, inside of greenhouses and arboretums. Now, those places are very expensive. There's a lot of really smart people running those places, you know, PhDs and stuff like that, but they're able to simulate the conditions to cause trees to fruit indoors in those very cold places. So. Is it technically possible? Yes. Is it probable? Is it cheap? Is it feasible? Probably not. Then again, there's teenagers living all over the place who get marijuana plants to flower in the middle of winter in their bedrooms, and they can even do that while hiding it from their parents. So if they could figure that out, maybe we could figure out a way to get avocados to fruit indoors in climates that don't support it. But that's another video for another time. For those of you who live in climates that do support avocado growth, at some point you're going to find yourself with a successfully grafted tree. Now to take care of that tree, because it, it might be a full year that you're growing this thing in a pot, I do two things. Number one, I, I give my trees a spray of copper-based fungicide about once a month, about every four to five weeks. Now if, if you're keeping it indoors inside an enclosed patio, you probably won't need to do that. But if you see the leaves start to get a little black or start to get a little brown or they crumble and fall off, that means you got some fungus. Just get yourself at any, you know, garden store, Home Depot, what have you, a, a, a copper-based fungicide. Another thing I like to do about every 60 days is, like I did earlier, I just give a little teaspoon of uh, 666 mix fertilizer around the edge of the pot. These things are delicate. You don't want to go too near the stem. You don't want to get the roots right there at the stem. You want to go around the rim, around the inside edge of the pot. And like I say, just a little teaspoon or a tablespoon spoon, a tablespoon full of stuff about every 60 days. Now, as the tree starts to get bigger, you want to gradually transplant into bigger and bigger pots. I recommend you wait until right before your rainy season start to put your plants in the ground because although you can irrigate them, there's really nothing like natural rain to make these things sprout and thrive. Once you get your tree in the ground and it's already been in the pot for a year, you'll probably cycle through one year with no fruit. The following year you're likely to get fruit. However, for that to happen we have to talk about our fourth consideration. Pollination. Pollination is a somewhat complicated topic. And it's further complicated because avocados are self-pollinators. So instead of trying to explain it all to you here in the shade house, I put together this little animation. In order to produce fruit, your tree needs to be pollinated. Pollination is the process where pollen is transferred from male flowers to female flowers, usually by an insect. In the case of avocado trees, a honeybee visits a male flower picks up pollen, and later when he visits a female flower, he deposits some of that pollen and fertilizes it. But it's a bit more complicated for avocados because avocados can be both male and female at the same time. And the way they decide whether to open as female or male depends on their flowering type. There are type A and type B. In the afternoon, type A open as female and the bees open as male. So as a honeybee is flying around or a swarm of honeybees is flying around your yard, they visit your male flowers on the type B and transfer pollen to the A's and fertilize your A's. Then the next morning, it's reversed. Your bees open as female and the A's open as male. So as the bee flies around your yard now, he visits your type A trees and gets covered in pollen. And he delivers that pollen to your type Bs. And now all of your A's are fertilized and all of your Bs are fertilized. This is just a brief list 
of some of the more common types of avocado. Just about everyone has eaten a Haas. If you're from the Caribbean or South Florida, you've had Catalina, Choquette, Simmons, Monroe. And here at Sleepy Lizard Avocado Farm, we grow primarily Choquette and Monroe variety. So we have a very robust mix of type A and B. If you want to increase your chances of pollination, you want to mix A's and B's. And when I sell trees to people, I not only recommend mixing A's and B's, but I also try to sell them a mix of early season fruit and late season fruit. That way the early season starts producing fruit, say in like June, July, and you could leave those on the trees well into the winter time. And then your late season fruit starts producing in, in say late October, early November, and you could leave those on the trees well into say February. So you can have fruit uh, that you could be eating avocados say from June through February, not quite the whole year, but a big chunk of the year if you combine A's and B's and if you combine early and late season fruit. Now, if you're not buying it from me, and you're gonna, and, and you want to skip steps one and two, right? If you don't want to grow your own seedling and, and do your own grafting, you can go to a nursery, you can go to Lowe's, you can go to Home Depot, you can go to a garden center and buy yourself grafted avocados. I suggest before you do that, you do a little research and you determine what kind of avocados do you want. If if you live in like zone eight eight B and it does get a little cold. You might want some of the more cold hardy varieties, say like an Oro Negro. If you want to have fruit all year round, you want to get a good mix of early season and late season. And you definitely want to familiarize yourself with what are variety of flowering type A and what are flowering type B. So when you do go to the nursery to buy your trees, you can pick a good mix and when you put them in the yard, you'll increase your chance of getting fruit. Back to you folks who live in climates that don't support avocados. Now you see that in, in, in addition to having to create a greenhouse to simulate the climate conditions that an avocado needs to, to, to thrive, survive, and flower, you would also need to figure out some way to pollinate those trees. Now I know scientists can do it with, uh, I don't know if they use microchips or Bunsen burners. They use some kind of scientific way of pollinating the trees and that's how they get them to you know, uh, fruit citrus up in New York and in D.C. and those places. But like I say, it, 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 mechanically, there's a, there is a way to do it. The question is, uh, you know, you'd probably be spending about $1,000 per avocado by the time you were done. So do you really want to do it? Now, if you'd rather spend your money on something that I think would give you a lot more value, say this Sleepy Lizard t-shirt, go to guacfarm.com. G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M, guacfarm.com. That's where we sell our t-shirts, we have stickers. We're now selling grafted seedlings at guacfarm.com. We're also selling scion wood, seeds, and fruit. So go to guacfarm.com, get yourself a t-shirt, get yourself a tree, and I will see you on the next video. Oh man, did I tell them I'm not good at grafting?